Welcome to Make Something with me, David Petrito. Today we are making some dice pencil holders. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Check it. So I've got my blade set to 45 degrees using the digital angle gauge. I'm gonna sneak up on the perfect cut, so it might take me a couple tries to get that miter to meet up with the edge of the wood. That was just a piece of wood that chipped off and stuck in right there. Nothing that I did wrong as far as I could see. That was unexpected. I think what is happening as I'm pushing this piece through, this waste piece is getting trapped between the blade and the throat plate here, pinched and then coming back at me. It's not ruining the piece, but it is scaring the crap out of me every time. And I think I'm going to move this operation over to the router. A couple of things that could fix that is if you have a miter gauge, some sort of backing board on here that can help push that piece all the way through the blade and then it won't get pinched in there. And then another method that we were discussing off camera was moving the fence to this side of the blade and running the pieces through. But then we run into the issue of when we get to the last cut, this, instead of it being this way on this side, it would be this way on this side. And there's this edge could get caught underneath there. And we would have to make some sort of sacrificial fence that goes all the way to the table. And it kind of complicates it. Plus this is really awkward. So I want to avoid that. I'm just gonna use the router at the router table. I've got a 45 degree chamfer bit in my router table and I'm going to do it in two passes. So my fence has moved up just a little bit so I'm not taking off all of that wood at one time. I'll run through everything, then nudge the fence back and then run everything through one more time for a final pass. I'm also gonna use this paddle to keep my hands away from that nasty bit. Here we go. After I did that second pass, I went through one more time just to make sure I got a nice smooth edge, especially on the end grain of this hard maple, it would want to pull away from the fence a little bit, but I think we got it. I think we're, I think we're going to be pretty good. It's not all the way to the line, which is okay. Cause we will round that over in a later step. So I went ahead and drew all my layout lines and then I circled where I want to countersink the holes. Now I'm gonna take an ice pick and just kind of jab the center point. This helps the drill bit position itself in the exact spot where I want it to go. And yes, that is a Jimmy Duresta ice pick. Everything is marked and all the holes are going to be countersunk except for the top piece so it can hold pencils. On this one, I want the number five to go all the way through. And just to be different, on this one, I want the three to go all the way through. So those holes are gonna go all the way through. Everything else is going to be countersunk. Not necessary, but I've got a fence set up on my drill press for all of the corner holes that need to be drilled. I can just pop it in there, drill, pop it in there and drill. I'll have to remove the fence to do the center ones. I've set my depth stop to a quarter of an inch. This is, this is a crazy fancy drill press. It automatically starts when I pull and then when it gets to its depth, it will go into reverse. It's overkill and I love it. I do have a video on this drill press. 
But if you have a normal everyday drill press, you want to set your depth stop to about half the thickness. That is it. So the top piece has the holes all the way through and all the other five side pieces counter board. Now the, the outside holes, they do go into the, the beveled edge a little bit. So that means when we glue that together, there's going to be a little bit of that beveled edge sticking out. I am okay with that because this sticks with the true nature of how the die are drawn up and designed. So I made enough for two of them. You have a couple of options. You could paint the inside here black. That is one. You could mix up some epoxy and then add some black dye to it and just fill that in. That is two. What I am going to do is I am going to make a walnut inlay. I have some really thin stock walnut lying around and I am going to use, I think I'm going to use the laser cutter and then cut a little disc and then glue them in there. So now you pour in your epoxy or you glue in your inlay, whatever you're doing. Let's match the grain. So this inlay actually sits down a little bit, just like six and one, seven, two and five, seven. So opposite sides always add up to seven. So we are gluing this up and we're just using tape as clamps. I put a 1 8 inch round over on all the edges and then I don't know if you can see but the holes on the corner here it kind of goes into the side pieces and I am just going to drill that out a little bit further not all the way down but just down far enough where you can't see it anymore and then where that drill bit stopped I'm just going to blend that in a little bit with a file While I'm sanding these pencil holders, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. For 10 years, I worked for an ad agency, and my main job was to develop websites for our clients. At that time, I loved making websites. I did it full time for the ad agency, and then I would come home and then work on freelance websites. And now that I no longer make websites for a living, I don't want to spend a bunch of time doing so. And so all of my websites are Squarespace sites and they were all Squarespace sites even before they were a sponsor of this channel. And the reason is it is super easy to use. Their templates are absolutely beautiful and it's easy to update. You don't have to worry about all that technical stuff. You can just focus on what you want to do. I want to focus on woodworking and making these videos and I don't want to spend any more time than I have to working on my website and that's where Squarespace comes in and makes it super easy for me to run my business. Whether you have a business or a hobby or you just want to have a place to show off your stuff, visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for making my life easier and thank you for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to these pencil holders. And the last thing to do, put a coat of polyurethane on there. Don't even need the brush. We're just gonna, we're gonna rub it in. Mm. Ugh. I'll let it sit on there for a little bit. And then I'll come back in a few minutes and wipe off all of the excess with a rag. And that is going to do it. If 
You think I deserve it? Clamp down that likes button. I have a Patreon page and over there we do a little bit of behind the scenes and a monthly discount coupon. So you might want to check that out. The one thing that bothers me is the outside holes on the top there. They go into the side pieces and I can see that. The plans will be a little bit different. I'll make the holes either a little bit smaller or a little bit closer together so it doesn't interfere with the side pieces. So there will be plans available for this. Link down in the description. That is going to wrap it up. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up right there. <laughs>